Meg, you got a tip from a viewer about something not quite a tent city, but what do you got? So this is New Jersey's underbelly, these tent cities that we've been discovering. My neighbor first told me about the people of the woods who live in Browns Mills, New Jersey. While well, she went to volunteer with the Christian Caring Center to bring them food, I knew I had to investigate this as soon as she told me that while they were bringing food. Uh, no young person should see what's going on in there. I first had to gain the group's trust before they led me down their path into the woods where some have lived for 10, 20 years. I can't even count on my fingers. New Jersey's seemingly out of control drug problem. We've got Meg Baker uh, with New Jersey's top cop. What do you got? That's right. I spent the morning out chasing with Tom's River Township police officer Westfall, New Jersey's top cop who made a record number of DWI arrests in 2013, 105 to be exact. How bad was it the other night? So I was so excited to be at the game. We left a little bit early before the end of the game because we were Broncos fans. <laughs> so the crowd was quite somber waiting for trains. But then once 10:10 hit, the trains were supposed to be running every 10 to 15 minutes. And the line was not moving. So people started to get frustrated, started to ask security guards questions as to what was going on. Was this a safety issue? And they didn't have answers. So I think if the people had answers, police officers could give them answers as to what the delay was, people would have been okay with waiting so that Matt, line. So Meg, give us an idea. How long did you actually wait for the train? Over two hours. I threw a question at him as we were in line, as he was greeting residents here in Linden and asked him, Governor, can we expect anyone from the National Committee coming down to campaign with you? I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you idea. want them? Hey, listen, I, I, I could campaign on my own. I'm pretty good. But then I did talk to a staffer that said we will know by Sunday that Monday, Tuesday, and the final round of this election season, there will be people coming up from D.C. to campaign on the behalf of Governor Chris Christie. So we went in there with Camden's Fraternal Order of Police President John Williamson, who took us into the encampment. This is the tent city that was relocated from Federal Street. But this one, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't look as organized. Only one woman came out while we were there, and I just asked her a quick question, you know, how long have you lived here? And her simple response was, too long. Too long. Too long. Now, this was John's first time walking into this relocated tent city. Uh, and you could hear in his voice how shocked he was of the conditions. It's uh, heart-wrenching. Now they were thrown off the property. I received text messages and tweets last night saying that the levels of hydrogen sulfide gas, the toxic fumes coming off of Fenimore landfill, had reached epic proportions. They reached 930 parts per billion. Let me read you some of these text messages. Today I received a tweet as an update from Jennifer saying H2S from Fenimore is out of control, feeling horribly sick, packing up again in all caps for long weekend. Need to get my kids out of here. A proposed 9-11 Memorial in Princeton may not be built using this wreckage from the World Trade Center that has a cross etched in it by first responders. The council is saying this brings up some state and church issues. Roy James, the deputy fire chief who took on this project, wanted to honor those who lost their loved ones and lost their lives in 9-11.